The title of my presentation is The Role of Rubber Dam During the COVID-19 Pandemic. This is the outline of my lecture. I'll be talking a bit on COVID-19, the aerosols, different rubber dam techniques, and I made videos on the different techniques in rubber dam isolation. And my take home message, the lecture on rubber dam is intended for students and dentists who has not done rubber dam isolation for quite a long time. COVID-19 positive patient was first reported in the Philippines on January 30. This is from a Chinese tourist. On February 2, the first death due to COVID-19 outside China was also recorded in the Philippines. He was the boyfriend of the first COVID-19 case in the Philippines. Since then, COVID-19 cases has increased exponentially. I started this webinar last May 17 with a total of 12,513. That almost doubled after a month. As of today, June 11, we have a total of 24,175 confirmed cases of COVID-19. What are the common signs and symptoms of COVID-19? This was updated on May 20 by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. And the symptoms are cough, fever, chills, muscle pain, shortness of breath, or difficulty in breathing, sore throat, loss of taste, and smell. These are the occupations with the highest COVID-19 risk. The dentist dental hygienist and the dental assistants. In another country, the hygienist does the, or the oral prophylaxis, but in the Philippines, we dentists do it as well. So we dentists belong to the highest risk as well. How did they conduct the research? They came up with this data based on, number one, contact with others, how much does this job require the worker to be in contact with others in order to perform it? Their next criteria was physical proximity. To what extent does this job require the worker to perform tasks in close physical proximity to others? And lastly, the exposure to disease and infection. How often does this job require exposure to hazardous conditions like the aerosols. With all the criteria that has been used as parameters, we dentists need an utmost protection. This slide will tell us the transmission dynamics in dental practice. Since we dentists have close face-to-face -face contact with our patients, we use sharp devices and our repeated exposure to respiratory tract secretions blood, saliva, and other contaminated body fluids that constitutes our high risk for COVID-19 infection. How does NCOV enters our body? It has been confirmed that SARS and NCOV enters the body through the ACE2 cell receptor. Basically, this ACE2 or the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 it is an enzyme attached to the cell membranes of cells in the lungs, arteries, heart, kidney, and intestines. The ACE2 also serves as the entry point into cells SARS-CoV-2. In short, ACE2 receptor is necessary for the SARS-CoV-2 to enter our body, specifically the spike one protein of the virus, once it enters the cells, it will cause endocytosis and translocation of both the virus and the enzymes into endosomes located within cells. Patients who are hypertensive and has diabetic, diabetes mellitus are at high risk of COVID-19. Why? 
because patients who are taking ACE2 inhibitors and ARBS or the angiotensin receptor blockers both increase the ACE2 receptors on the surface of the cell. So we have to be extra careful when we do triage on these patients. Where do we find these ACE2, ACE2 receptors? In the study of Hausu in February 2012, they reported that there was a high expression of ACE2 in the epithelial cells of the oral cavity at 6.23 expression, and it was found highest in the tongue. This study concluded that the mucosa of the oral cavity may be a potentially high risk route for 2019 and COVID infection. In the study of To et al, they reported that live viruses were present in the saliva of infected individuals by culture method. The 2019 novel, no, novel coronavirus was detected in the self-collected saliva of 91.7%, and that is 11 out of 12 patients. And the serial saliva viral load monitoring generally showed a declining trend. Live virus was detected in saliva by viral culture. Saliva is a promising non-invasive specimen for diagnosis, monitoring, and infection control in patients with 2019 and COVID infection. In another study by Rushi Su, it was found out that and COVID can be found in saliva in their study. They were trying to know if saliva sample has the potential value for diagnosis and the close contact transmission of NCOV by saliva droplets. So far, there is no direct evidence has been found that NCOV is vital in airflow for a long time. In their, in their study, this illustration suggests that large saliva droplets sets up short distance transmission and hardly form long distance aerosol transmission outdoors due to complicated physical and biological decay. Prevention of droplets formation, implementation of air disinfection and blockage of droplets acquisition could passively slow down 2019 and COVID dissemination. What about aerosols? We all know that during this COVID-19 pandemic, the advice among dentists is to avoid aerosol generating procedures. But why? Because according to the WHO, the current evidence states that COVID-19 virus is primarily transmitted between people through respiratory droplets and contact routes and that it can only become airborne during procedures or treatment that generates aerosols. When we use the handpiece, there is a significant contamination of the operatory with a mean of 970 colony forming units per square meter per hour. The aerosolized material include viruses, blood and supra and subgingival plaque organisms. Therefore, what is the most important that we have to be concerned of? In this study of Cleveland in 2016, which stated that it is almost impossible to reduce droplet and aerosol production to zero during dental procedures, but we can reduce it. In the study of Basniri in 2012, the title of their article is Aerosol, a Silent Killer in Dental Practice. Because in their study, they said, during dental treatments, saliva may become aerosolized and microorganisms from the oral cavity will contribute to the spread of infection. How, but how, the patient is infected with a virus, in the study of Hamid Reza Palahi, based on this illustration, 
if the patient is infected, then the dentist has a high chance or risk of contracting the disease, which may eventually be transmitted to the next patient and also through the contaminated formines on the hand is used by the dentist. In their study, they also found out that NCOV is also transmissible through asymptomatic, through asymptomatic patients. Just for a review, there are three types of aerosols according to its size. The splatter is more than 50 microns, droplets is less than 50 microns, and the droplet nuclei less than 10 microns. To give you an idea how small the NCOV virus is, this is the size of a bitch sand. And look how small the virus is. It is really too small. And if you compare it with bacteria, they always use the term, the bacteria is giant when compared to the virus based on its size. Since the splatter is big enough, it will fall until, until it contacts to an object like the countertops, floors, computer, the patient, and the dentist. What about the droplets? It will be suspended in the air until it evaporates and form a droplet nuclei that contain bacteria related to respiratory droplets. These droplet nuclei can contaminate surface in a range of three feet and may remain suspended in the air for 30 minutes to two hours, according to the study of Robert Wayan in March 19, 2020. These are the procedures that is known to produce airborne contamination. We have the ultrasonic and sonic scalers, air polishing, air and water syringe, tooth preparation with air turbine handpiece, and tooth prep with air abrasion. According to their study, airborne contamination during tooth preparation can be minimized using rubber dump. This study of Stephen Harrell was published in 2004, and the title of their research was Brief Review of the Literature and Infection Control Implications. The CDC also stated that in cases where in an emergency treatment has to be done during this COVID pandemic, high evacuation section and dental dams should be used to minimize the splatter and aerosols. The ADA also stated that in treating patients during this time, we have to decide on treating patients using clinical judgment, consider the patient's health, the clinical risks, especially on air aerosol generating procedure and the ability to employ the use of rubber dump. In the study of Samarayanake in 1989, they concluded that the use of rubber dump would minimize significantly the inhalation of infective aerosols by dental, by dental practitioners. Furthermore, rubber dump can also significantly minimize the production of saliva and blood contaminated aerosol splatter. And by doing so, the airborne particles has also been reduced by 70% in a three foot diameter operational field. This study also suggested that the rubber dump should be used together with a high volume suction. In another study released last March 2020 by Weyan, they stated that the use of rubber dump will eliminate virtually all contamination arising from the saliva and blood. Thus, the only remaining source of airborne contamination is from the tooth that is undergoing treatment. The problem is most of the dentist doesn't want to use it. I got this meme that says rubber dump, ain't nobody got time for that. And this lecture is intended again for those dentists who doesn't want to use it. But since the current literature states that it can reduce the infected aerosols, I hope you will start to use rubber dump, not only for endo, but also for other dental procedures as well. 
Let's talk about rubber dam now. It was discovered in 1864 by Dr. Barnum. And these are the advantages of using rubber dam. The patient are protected from the ingestion or worse, the aspiration of small instruments, dental fragments, and irrigating solutions. The opportunity to operate in a clean surgical field. There will be retraction and protection of the soft tissues. There will be better visibility in the working area. Number five, I think, is the most important nowadays. The dentists and the dental assistants are protected against infections, which can be transmitted by the patient's saliva. Number six, the dentists are more comfortable and a better behavior management. What are the uses of rubber dam in dental procedures? It can be used in a quadrant scaling. With this, you will be reducing contact with the saliva. You can also use definitely rubber dam in restoration. Aside from protecting the tooth from moisture, most especially during composite restoration, it also helps to reduce inhalation of respiratory droplets. It can also be done during crown preparation, most especially during bulk tooth reduction. Then in cases where in the cervical margins has to be refined, then the rubber dam may be removed and that reduces the number of minutes that you are in contact with the saliva. So let's review rubber dam, okay? So we have the five by five and six by six. It has different colors and it has different thickness. The thickness that we usually use for endodontics is the medium, which is gauge 0.20, okay? The rubber dam clumps, we have different kinds of clumps. We have the wing and we have the wingless, okay? The clump is primarily for the retention of the rubber dam. And definitely, we need to secure the clump with dental floss. Now, this is another design of the clump, which is called the sicker Gickman clump. This is used for severely broken down tooth, okay? Let's review the different parts of the clump. We have the bow here, okay? And this is usually placed on the distal for the posterior teeth. But for the anterior teeth, it can be either be mischial or distal, but the most important is it should not be hindering your line of view. Then we have the central wing, and we also have the anterior wing. We have the hole here, and we have the jaw and the four point contacts. Now, how do we select the correct size of the clump? In this illustration, we say that this is too big, because this area is already encroaching on the gingiva and that causes pain. So that's not the correct size of the rubber dam clump. How about this one? Oh, it's not encroaching the gingiva, but what happens here? Normally there's a great tension in the bow and that can also cause breakage of the rubber dam clump. So we must be able to get into the correct size. How do we manage to get the correct size? Imagine, this jaw will also correspond to the mission distal width of the tooth that you're going to isolate at the cervical level. What about the other types of this clump? We have the blonde, you see it's only straight, and the retentive, which is apically positioned. They have recommended this in cases wherein there is no more clinical crown. But honestly, in my opinion, I, I do not use this. Instead, on those teeth that does not have the clinical crown and I only have a few millimeters of a tooth from the cervical margin, I usually use this type of clamp, the wingless by ivory. Now, we need to tie the clamp. Now, I usually just make this kind of tie, but if you're a beginner and you don't know much about the selection of which size is the best, because if you have not chosen the correct size, as I've said, this can break. So to avoid breakage, just make sure that you, uh, you get the correct size of the clump, okay? And since the breakage might, uh, might not be avoided, 
or new dentist who's using it might as well make this kind of tie, okay? We're in after it's breakage, then you still have connection, okay? Now, I would suggest that after the removal of carious lesion, to get a complete isolation of the tooth, please make sure that you always make a buildup on your tooth, okay? This will prevent contamination against uh, any of this saliva coming from this side on the mission. Now the rubber dump punch, I think everybody knows this. This is just simply used to make a hole and you have the biggest hole, the smallest hole. It depends on the tooth that you're working on. The biggest is for the molar and for the smallest is you have for the anterior, lower anterior and the rest, you can choose this from the premolar and maxillary anterior teeth. There's another type of clump, uh, the puncher, the ivory punch. So whatever you want, whatever you have, it's your choice if you use the ivory or the other one. Uh, some tips when you make a hole, when you punch a hole on the rubber dump sheet, make sure it's a clean cut, you produce a clean cut. You avoid the nicks and the tags because once you stretch the rubber dump sheet, this can cause tearing of the rubber dump sheet. Just in case you need to do a multiple isolation, make sure you have a distance of five to six millimeters because if it's too near to each other, then you will have more tension on the rubber dump sheet. And if you space it more than five to six millimeters, then you will have wrinkles in this area. So the rubber dump clump forceps, Okay, you have this ivory, okay? The ivory forceps are preferable. Well, it depends on whatever you want. Now for the parts of this, it's important to know that you have the pointed tips wherein you place this on the hole. You have the hinge, you have the forcep arm, you have the sliding ring and the handle. The sliding ring is important when, so that you reduce tension here when you're placing the rubber dump clump into the tooth. Uh, there's another one here, the ash or the Stokes pattern. As I've said, it doesn't matter, whatever you have, then you can use it. How about the rubber dump frame? I prefer to use this rubber dump frame, the Star BC frame, which is made of plastic. I don't want to be using the Young's frame because it will have some problem when I take radiograph in between my root canal treatment. The Nigert OSB, there, if I use this, there will be lots of tension in this area. So I really prefer this plastic U-type shape, U-shape, the star BC frame. There's another frame, the articulated frame. I think this is very good because uh, you can just flip it half. Please be reminded that whenever we take radiograph in between the root canal treatment, we do not remove the rubber dam assembly. Okay, so this is the advantage of this rubber dam clump, uh, rubber dam frame, because it can be folded. The plastic frames are, are recommended because it is radiolucent. So it is best when you're taking your IAF, MAF, and your master foam. How about the rubber dam napkins? So basically you, you can use this to prevent contact of the rubber dam sheet into the skin of the patient. It also absorbs any saliva sitting at corners of mouth. It, it can also act as, as a cushion and its usage is actually not mandatory. How about the dental floss? Okay, it prevents the ingestion or aspiration of the clump in cases it slips off. And you can also use it to tease the rubber dump sheet in between the teeth. Tooth isolation using the dental dump is the standard of care in endodontics. But even that we know that it's a standard of care, a lot of dentists are still doing root canal treatment without using the rubber dump. But nowadays, it's not, as I've said, it's not only for, for root canal treatment, but you can also use it in other procedures like the restoration, even you do prosto, and even if you do the oral prophylaxis, you can just do split dump technique. There are different methods on how to put on the rubber dam. You can put the rubber dam together with the clump, or you put the clump first, or the rubber dam sheet first, 
or you can opt for the all together technique. But before doing all of this technique, uh, there are some things that is very important. Make sure that the tooth that you're going to isolate is clean. You have selected the correct size of the clump and you have done pre-fitting of it. You have done a good punching of the hole, no nicks, no tags. You have secured the rubber dump clumps with the floss and then you can choose whatever technique you want. Uh, tease the rubber dump sheet in between the teeth. You put on the saliva ejector and during access cavity preparation, you use your high volume suction. Now, these are the different techniques and I have videos of it, okay? Now, just recently in May 2020, in JOE, Journal of Antidontics, they said that dentists should use a rubber dump to minimize splatter generation. So because before it's mainly to prevent uh, aspiration of these small instruments, but now the, the Journal of Endodontics in this article, they said to minimize splatter generation, and it may be advantageous to place the rubber dam so that it covers the nose. So now we need to cover the nose as well. Now, since most of the patients or some of the patients would say, I can't breathe when the rubber dam is on my nose, so I tried to look for an article and I found this article, the effect of rubber dam on arterial oxygen saturation in children. So they found out that there was no significant change in oxygen saturation after rubber dam isolation with nose covered or uncovered in children of six to 12 years of age. So I suppose if this is uh, true for patients who are young individuals, this might be true also for an adults, except for patients who have respiratory problems. They might have difficulty in breathing. So I have already uploaded the videos. Please try to look for it, subscribe, and like it, okay? Now for my take home message. So in this pandemic era, so we dentists, we need to prepare a lot. And one of the common things that I've seen on the Facebook is most of the dentists has been buying this extra oral volume section. And I found this study in 2012, the efficacy of high volume evacuator in aerosol reduction, is it a truth or a myth? A clinical and microbiological study. And what was their conclusion? That they have concluded that high volume evacuator when used as a separate unit without any modification is not effective in reducing aerosol counts and environmental contamination. So for me, I think if you have enough, you have, you have prepared everything, your high volume suction, your HEPA filter, your ventilation, then you can buy this, but this is not a priority for me. Next. How much extra protection does FFP3 mask offer in the dental surgery? Okay, because we are required to use the N95 mask. And the study, according to this, I'll, I'll go directly to the table. If you use surgical mask, you will have a filtration of 62%. If you add surgical mask together with a high volume suction, then the filtration rate will be 92.78%. And if you use the surgical mask, the high volume suction or evacuator, plus the rubber dam, look, you'll be getting a 99.62% of filtration. So this is really very good. We have to think, and if you don't have the high volume suction yet, I think this is the best thing to buy for this pandemic, and it's not only during pandemic. This is really actually required for us, okay? So if you're going to compare it with the FFP3, you have the 99% filtration. So that is almost comparable with the surgical mask, high volume suction, and the use of rubber dam. okay? They stated that there is a much larger difference if the quality of the high volume suction is reduced and rubber dump is not used, okay? 
So please use the high volume suction together with the rubber dam to attain the 99 plus filtration rate. What about the HEPA filter? Now, it was suggested that for suspected or confirmed COVID-19 patients, a portable HEPA filter is recommended only in the following situation. The patient undergoes an aerosol generating procedure in a non-negative pressure room, okay? So it has some use as well. How about the ventilation, okay? With regards to the ventilation of your clinic, you can ask your architects or the engineers how they can make it to have a good exchange of air in our dental clinic. Now they recommend the mouth rinse, the pre-procedural rinse of chlor of hydrogen peroxide or the chlorhexidine. But for the for the hydrogen peroxide, now they have recommended 1.5% for one minute rinse. And they all, you can also use the 1% povidone iodine. So we have to do lots of preparation. We have this, all of this PPE, okay? But with everything that we have to prepare, what do you think is the best? The key is the high volume suction, and the rubber dam will give us will give us a better protection against aerosols. Okay, and before, if we are comfortable working like this, now with a new normal, we have to be complete with our PPE because all our patients has to be considered COVID patient or asymptomatic COVID nineteen patients. Now, not only for endo. I know that a lot of dentists are working, especially on anterior teeth without the rubber dam. I hope this, is not, this will not happen again because it's not only for the aspirations of these small instruments, but we have this very small virus that we don't want to be infected with, okay? And I hope with this lecture, I have given you a little background on the COVID, the aerosols, the importance of rubber dump, and how to do it again. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Just click and subscribe and hope to give you more of this in my next episodes. Thank you very much.